Good morning, it's Joe and Lisa with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. We just want to thank everyone for their subscriptions and for all your comments, all the thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Helps us a lot. Um, we just want to talk to you today a little bit about raising chickens in Ecuador. Lisa is now our resident chicken lady. <laughs> yeah, right. And we got the chicken dogs here with us today. Yes, they're they're good guard dogs for the chickens. Yeah. So um, we don't have too much uh, predator pressure here in Ecuador with our chickens, um, but there are some places do have it. And we do have hawks here. We do have uh, winchaca, which is the same thing as like a possum. Mm. And uh, they will kill the chickens. Um, we do have snakes here and they can get in and kill chickens. Um, mostly they'll eat eggs. Um, but we haven't had much uh, problem with the way our system is set up. No. I mean, we had, there was a chicken pen when we moved in, and so it it was kind of limited as to what we could do with it. So I think we kind of maxed it out as to what we can do with it. Um, but yeah, no, we can lock them up at night, which um, before we moved in, that kind of wasn't the case, but it's got a lot of chain link around the uh, chicken pen itself. So, and then we've added some more interior structure to support having both rabbits and chickens in the same pen, which has been really nice. Yeah, they're separate yet together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's not like the chickens can sit on top of rabbit cages or anything like that. No. That does not happen. But um, yeah, they have essentially two separate yards we can uh, turn them into so mm -hmm. they can free range. The lemon tree in the one yard is just flourishing with lemons. Yeah. Because uh, they're getting all that fresh fertilizer all the yeah, time. Yeah, the other yard, we used to have a mango tree, but for whatever reason, I guess it got too old and it passed on. And so that yard was kind of, has been empty for a little while, which makes it really hot during the dry season. And the chickens don't really have anywhere to hide. So we've just recently gone in and rehabbed that, put a bunch of bananas in there, which I'm expecting to take off because... They're going to get so much fertilizer being in that area. They should do well, and they should should provide some good shade for the chickens in there. And, uh, um, you know, there's lots of forage in there for them. Uh, they, if you leave them in one yard very long, they take it down to bare ground, obviously. So um, moving them back and forth is always a good plan. Yeah, and you want to plant some things in there that will promote bugs. Um, chickens require a bit of protein, and they really like their bugs. Um, so anything you can plant that, you know, will bring something in that you can't really plant a lot on the ground because they're going to scrape it up, but, uh, yeah, higher, higher plants. Yeah. They'll eat, um, I mean, lily leaves, whatever. <laughs> yeah, they're eating yeah, my they lily eat, leaves eat all right kinds now. Of stuff. And we have, we plant lots of stuff like comfrey and peanut grass and like that on the property that we harvest and take to them. Yeah. Alfalfa, things like that. They love to eat that. So I do want to talk a little bit about um, eggs here in Ecuador. And I, I always love to tell the story of a friend of ours who was the worked for the um, county health department back in Williamson County. Yeah. And uh, when I first went, I had to get an egg permit to be able to sell eggs at the farmer's market. So she told me I had to keep my eggs at 41 degrees or less at the farmer's market, where if they came by, they would make me dump all my eggs. And that... Eggs had to be washed, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I politely explained to her that, you know, in Europe and other countries, they haven't washed eggs in many, <laughs> many years, and they don't put eggs in cold storage. They leave them out in, at air temperature. And she says, well, you'd be wrong about that. I said, no, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty right. So we moved to Ecuador, and the first thing I did was send her a picture of the stacks and stacks of eggs stacked up in the aisleways at the grocery store. Huge pallet. They get no cold storage. And nobody is dying of salmonella here. No, and, uh, and I would say even in Texas before we came here, we had the eggs that we washed and kept for the for resale. And then we had our eggs, which we didn't really wash and we didn't refrigerate, you know, until you needed them. So it's a whole lot better. I mean, you think about every recipe you have um, when you're baking, you need a room temperature egg. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, yeah, that was just kind of foolishness, uneducation, let me say. Um, so anyway, we've hopefully educated some people as we've gone along. Um, 
most of these chickens have been introduced to salmonella um, early on, and so the resistance is passed down to the baby chicks. So that's why we don't get salmonella. I do want to say the eggs here, if you go into a tienda to buy eggs, they're going to sell you the brown eggs at one price. They used to be $3 for a flat of 30 They've now gone up to about $4. $4.30 for yeah. a flat of that's 30 That's in the last year they've gone up. Yeah. And so they'll tell you that the green eggs are organic, and they'll charge you 9 or $10. So there's no such thing. As you know, the green eggs are just come from a different variety of chicken. Mm. And uh, don't pay that extra unless you're sure that those are yard eggs from someone's house and that you know for a fact that they're organic. The color makes no difference as to whether or not they're organic. No. So there is no organic chicken feed that you can buy here in Ecuador. You have to grow it yourself. So um, we have some things that we've done. Uh, we, we watched a guy on YouTube, pretty interesting, Tractor Supply was going through this bad chicken feed uh, time. And, I mean, read into it what you will, but a lot of people's chickens quit laying. And mm -hmm. so people were giving away, getting away from that tractor supplied chicken food. And this guy showed us a pretty neat thing on YouTube. Yeah, he was um, feeding his chicken. So he did some experiments. And we've, we've seen a lot of videos where they were experimenting with um, how they could do something different with their feed. But this one guy, it was super simple. He gets beans. You can buy just like the cheapest beans you can find, little hard, you know, dry beans. And you soak them overnight and then you cook them as usual. And um, then you add a little bit of pasta. Now, if you run out of pasta, I've added oatmeal. And if you get the pasta with the, the string pasta, they really like that because it looks kind of like a worm. But uh, you can add just about anything. Put your food scraps in there and let them, you know, in the last half hour of cooking, um, you just add whatever you want to add into it. Um, you can put vegetable scraps, any kind of kitchen scraps in there, um, and they love it. Um, I will say that I have 12 chickens right now, 10 small ones, two larger ones, and I have a, a little bitty plastic tub that's, you know, not very big, and that's all they get in a day of those beans, and it's just to give them a little bit more protein, a little bit more nourishment, than, than everything else that they're scratching for and foraging for. Um, and it fills them up. I mean, at the end of the day, if I sprinkle in some cracked corn in there just to bring them in for the night, sometimes they eat it, sometimes they don't. Just, I guess, depends on what they forage for during the day. But the guy on the video, he did a great job of saying, you know, first I gave them this big old tub of food and noticed after a couple minutes, you know, they barely ate it and they walked away meaning they were full. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't take a lot to to fill them up. And they are fat and healthy. We've got the shells are really good and hard and thick. Yeah. And, uh, man, we've been getting a lot of big double yolkers out of them, too. So, yeah. yeah, good quality eggs. They're just about as healthy as they could be. We do take the shells, the old shells, and we'll cook them in the oven at 350 for 10 or 15 minutes, and then we'll pulverize them, powder them up, and uh, sometimes feed them back to the chickens or use them in the garden or, you know, yeah. various things that we do with them. Mm -hmm. Now, the beans that we buy, um, we have a place here called Porto Seco, which is a dry port or it's a, a wholesale farmer's market, if you will, in Loja. And we go there and we buy a big bag, you know, like a five-pound bag of beans, uh, sometimes 15 pounds, I think, is the yeah. last one. Yeah. So we get a big, big bag of beans that's... Uh, Runs us, you know, between 70 and 90 cents a pound. Yeah, we bring them home and we put them in plastic tubs. And basically, I have a, a plastic tub that if I fill it up, that's what I use each week when I cook their food. Um, and then I just stick it in the back of the freezer, and that way no bugs get to it or anything like that. And so it takes, you know, a, a pound of beans and a pound of pasta uh, we'll make enough food for these 12 chickens for the entire week. No, oh, I don't use a pound of pasta. You don't use a pound of pasta? No. So. Yeah, I'm going to show you the little bag of pasta that I use. and It doesn't take a lot. Yeah, and, and the pasta runs about, you know, 70, 80 cents for a libra mm -hmm. or a pound of pasta. 
So, you know, for a buck 80, we're feeding chickens for yeah. the whole week. And especially if you throw in your chicken scrap or your, your food scraps into that, it just adds more bulk. Uh, anything that's kind of mushy, they're going to eat it up. This is the only way that you're going to guarantee organic eggs um, in Ecuador is, um, you know, to really kind of produce this yourself. Mm -hmm. um, we do throw them, like I said, alfalfa, different scraps from around the property. Yeah. They eat all of that. They love it. Um, it's just really hard to find anything organically produced here on a commercial basis. The feeds that sell at the feed store here is called Balenciados or Balanced, and it's definitely not organic. Um, we can find some organic cracked corn here. Um, it's available, especially if you go to the local farmers and buy it mm. and then come home and crack it yourself with a hand grinder. Mm. Works very well. Yeah, and I would say the other thing when you're feeding them, if you've got scrap meat, chickens are carnivorous. Please give them some protein. They'll, they'll devour it. I take um, bones. If I cook something that's got bones on it um, and it's got a little bit of meat left on the bone, give it to them. They'll, they'll pick it clean, and it Love gives it. them a little bit of protein for the day. Yeah, and, um, uh, you know, I think when you're buying baby chicks here at the mm -hmm. different little agricultural stores, just be aware they're going to tell you they're all mujeres or females, and they're not. <laughs> they're mostly mixed run. Uh, there's a lady at the Malacatos feed store that she she will guarantee me mujeres, and they yeah. will be. Um, but so, yeah, I just understand that they're probably going to be mixed run. We have a, a variety of different breeds here. Mm -hmm. types of chickens and just make sure you're getting egg layers not the ones for meat yeah and although the egg layers you know if you get a couple of roosters in there they still make great meat oh yeah uh, dual purpose they have some barred rocks here just keep an eye on them as they're growing up don't let them get too old before they jump in the freezer if you see them starting to get aggressive you probably got some males in there mm -hmm. and uh so yeah um you know that has worked extremely well for us and uh, we had chickens when we first moved here, and then we went for a while without them. Now we've got them again since the price of eggs is starting to... The price of eggs is going up, and, and we've had paros here, too, that shockingly, the town of Vilcabamba ran out of eggs. Yeah, you have a strike here, and, and the trucks can't come in, and there's no eggs. All of a so. sudden, all those eggs you see stacked up everywhere, they're not local. Yeah, they're not local. They're coming from Loja and other mm -hmm. places. So um, you can get local eggs here, don't get me wrong. True. If you go to the Saturday Mercado, mm. um, there are people there who sell good quality, great eggs, and um, that's one great yeah. place to get them. But all these little tiendas, they're not always local. I always thought they bought from, from local farmers. Evidently not. Not necessarily always the case. No. Yeah, so our birds live a pretty good life here, and um, you know we try to feed them well, and they're healthy as can be. Um, so, yeah, chicken farming in Ecuador, it, it can go well. A lot of my friends here are doing the black soldier fly larvae, mm -hmm. and uh, we've had some demonstrations on how to build a really nice bin to make all that happen. And so uh, the black soldier fly larvae is a great place to get them some protein. Chickens love it, and it can be almost maintenance-free if you set it up right. Um, you know, just keep adding some scraps to it. I'm all for maintenance free. There's plenty of work to do on a farm. You don't need to add too much to it. That's exactly right. It's enough work just taking care of these dogs we've got. True, true. All right, so um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed all the information. If you got comments or questions, please give them to us. Ciao for now.